next thing is we will go ahead with heat transfer from extended surfaces. Here also I am not going to go in great detail, I am not going to solve the way we solved for one dimensional conduction, I am going to go on a fast track for fins. So, first how do you introduce fins in your class? When you start off fins, how do you introduce fins? Okay. So, what are the common examples you give for extended surfaces? IC engines. I think IC engines seems to be uh, very common or maybe it goes or gels well with the students as well. Uh, electrical motor fins we do. Yes. Correct. So, that is precisely what here also we have tried to do. So, what I usually try to introduce is again Incropora and David's methodology or Changel's method. I start off with Newton's law of cooling and say that I am interested in removal of heat. From this equation, it is very apparent that there are three ways in which I can increase this heat. One is either increase my H or increase A or decrease T infinity. Increasing H and decreasing T infinity definitely will not come free. It involves using a fan or a pump or a refrigerator. So, some pumping power essentially we need some pumping power. We want to still increase the heat transfer, but not use pumping power let us say. The only option left out is to increase the area. So, with that I get started saying that okay, I need to have fins and this is the typical example in which I mean typical case in which very perfect fin I am showing where in which there are extended surfaces. Okay. So, there is the same thing blah 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 whatever I told in so many words has been put, uh, so many sentences that it is all there. See this material we have generated for the sake that even if there is no teacher, if the student is reading, he should be able to see the flow that is the reason it has been put that way. So, there are various, various applications, I think you are all teachers, so I need not have to harp on that. So, these are the various examples of various situations. So, I just say okay, this is what is called a straight fin of uniform cross section, this is straight fin of non-uniform and this is annular fin and this is pin fin of varying cross section. I can have a pin fin of uniform cross section. So, these are various examples which we say. So, then ha, here we come to general conduction analysis of a fin, but here in this we have taken varying area, varying cross sectional area. Although we give closed form solution subsequently only for constant cross sectional area at least while deriving we will derive it for varying cross sectional area. So, what do we do? We just take a small control volume. Okay. Again if you see here I am going to apply again my E dot in minus C dot out plus E dot G is equal to 0. Of course, in this fins we are not having E dot G. So, first thing is basic assumptions. What are the assumptions? Main assumption is that we are going to assume that the heat transfer is going to be in one direction. Okay. There is no heat transfer in other two directions and we are going to assume steady state and thermal conductivity is assumed to be constant. Is it going to be constant? It depends on the material and the temperature gradients we are going to handle. May not be true all the time, may not be true all the time. And then convective, the most important thing is that I th and of course, radiation is neglected, radiation is neglected which may be not a bad assumption for fins, because the temperatures at the fin tip is not usually very high. But I think serious assumption here most of the times is convective heat transfer coefficient is constant. Is it really correct or is it really representative of real life? May not be true, may not be true. If I take a fin, if it is it need not be same throughout. If it is if it is natural convection, natural convection also is dependent on temperature gradient. So, wherever temperature gradients are high, the Rayleigh numbers or the Grashof numbers are high, heat transfer coefficients are there are high. Subsequently, when the temperature gradient is decreasing as I proceed along with the fin, my temperature gradients are less, my Grashof numbers are less, my heat transfer coefficients are probably going to be less. So, it is, it is 
convective heat transfer coefficient need not be uniform in real life, okay. but we go ahead and make this assumption. With these assumptions, we will get back to our equation, we say that okay, at any x, the fellow which is entering in is q x and which is getting out is q x plus d x and out is also convectively it is getting out that is d q convection and here there are a c, I am going to use two notations that is a c, a subscript c is going to be cross sectional area, a subscript s is going to be surface area. In fact, more than surface area professor Bejan uses bathing area, I like bathing area rather than surface area that is that is the area which is getting bathed by the fluid. Okay. So, that gives me the physical feel rather than the surface area. So, I would like to call it as bathing area rather than surface area, although both are same, but nevertheless the feel is that how much it is getting, how much area is getting bathed by the outside fluid that that is what it means the A s. Okay. With this we are going to put again here E dot in is equal to E dot out, because E dot g is not there and E dot s t is not there and we have k a c d t d x and q x plus d x we have expanded, this is not at all new to us now and I have substituted q x plus d x equal to k a c d t d x that is equal to minus of k d by d x a c d t by d x. If I substitute that there, these two terms this and this will get cancelled out and d q convection is h d a s, let us not forget this is d a s t minus t infinity, this t is going to vary with length x. So, that is what we are interested in, we are going to get the temperature distribution, what are we up to, what are we up to. Another important thing while teaching what I practice is that whenever I am in the middle of the derivation, I ask always myself the question, what am I doing and what am I up to, where am I, why am I doing this, what are we trying to do in this, in this general conduction analysis if we ask ourselves. What are we trying to do? We are trying to write the governing equation by doing the energy balance. Why are we writing this energy? Why are we doing this energy balance? Ultimately, to get the temperature distribution. We are interested in temperature distribution. Why am I interested in temperature distributions? Because I want to find out whether by putting a fin whether my heat transfer rate is going to go up or come down. I do not want my heat transfer rates to come down, I want them to go up but how much they go up can be quantified only when I get my temperature distributions, is that right. So, that is the reason why we are going to do this. So, it is a good practice to stop in between and all of a sudden ask the question why, why are we doing and what are we doing, what are we doing and why are we doing. Okay. So, if you just do this we get we end up with this and if the cross sectional area is constant means which of the term will vanish second term will vanish that is d a c by d x. So, we go ahead with fins of uniform cross section, we take various cross sections, I am not going to get into details of this. So, we get this equation d square t by d x square and h k a c d a s by d x, because a s is also not a function of x. So, we are going to get d a s if the cross section is constant. So, you get d a s by d x as perimeter p, capital P I am using for perimeter. So, I end up with d square t by d x square minus h p by k a c t minus t infinity. We write, we tend to write this in the form of theta, because it looks elegant. So, I get d square theta by d x square minus m square theta equal to 0. As we can see the general solution of this, this is a second order differential equation. So, the general solution we have all studied in mathematics c 1 e to the power of m x plus c 2 e to the power of minus m x to get this c 1 and c 2 and m is square root of h p by k a c, h is heat transfer coefficient, p is perimeter, k is thermal conductivity, a c is the cross sectional area. So, how do I get this c 1 and c 2? Boundary conditions, what are the typical boundary conditions I tend to take usually? Base temperature I take it as constant, I take it as constant T b equal to constant and other tip I take different boundary conditions, is that right. So, what we all do I do not know what how you do for all cases you solve on the another thing I wanted to ask you is how do you teach, you use powerpoint or you use blackboard, 
See what we do is, although we have PowerPoints, we are not going to flash the PowerPoint in the class actually. We take, we marry both of them, we take both of them together. Whatever derivations I can do, the, the derivations we are skipping here because we are all teachers, we know what we are doing. So, I am skipping, I am not doing step by step, but what we do is on the board we write each and every step, but only for taking recap in the next class, what I taught in the last class, I take a recap for 2, 3 minutes by taking the recourse of PowerPoint. So, I think the problem with PowerPoint, we find that I cannot keep them engaged with me, that is the problem. So, how you guys do, I do not know. How many blackboards? Yeah. How many are blackboards? Oh, so excellent, excellent. So, how many number of students you handle in a class? So, we are better off, huh? yeah, yeah, 460 to 90. We are also not bad, we are also around that. Actually, we have 150, we divide the class into 75 and 75 and we share that, fine. So, so fine, why was I asking that? Because we derive on the board only for one case and subsequent ones, I just leave it for themselves, although the solution is there. Here of course, I am not going to do for everyone. I took here adiabatic boundary condition, if I substitute adiabatic boundary condition is d theta by d x equal to 0. If I substitute that and do all the algebra, which I am not going to do, I get theta by theta b equal to cos hyperbolic m x minus l upon cos hyperbolic. I think fins is a very favorite thing for everyone, so I do not think I need to dwell upon this. I want to save the energy and time for transient conduction. So, if I do the same way heat transfer that is minus K A C d theta by d x or d t by d x at x equal to 0, I am going to get heat transfer rate. Okay. So, similarly one can do for all the cases which I am not going to show here which is summarized in this table. So, I have tip condition either convective heat transfer, adiabatic prescribed temperature, infinite fin, temperature distribution and finite heat transfer rate. So, that is what we do for fin. So, but then one thing we have to remember in all of this one thing is common. What is that? Base temperature is assumed to be constant. If I change this boundary condition to constant heat flux, are these equations valid? No. So, I have to sit down and derive for constant heat flux boundary condition. Okay. So, but then if I have to incorporate radiation, can I take up, can I do that? How? By incorporating radiation terms into the normal equation of the itself. But then I will end up with non-linear differential equation, because I have t to the power of 4. So, one way out is already Professor Arun has introduced us of taking linearizing a non-linear equation into a linear form. What did he do it for us? sigma epsilon t to the power of 4 minus t infinity to the power of 4 can be rewritten as h r into a s into t to the power of 4 minus t infinity to the power of 4. So, you can combine in h itself h c and h radiation. So, if you can combine it that way, you can perhaps handle even with these equations for radiative boundary conditions as well. Okay. So, there are problems here. So, I think I here I just we usually I think I can skip this problem. I think I can skip this problem, do this problem. Yeah, yeah. So, what is this fin is this problem is that yeah maybe we will go slow, maybe I am going too fast. Let me slow down myself. Yeah, I will spend time on this. Okay. So, what are we doing here? Just just for a while you read this problem, what is it? So, we have a fin of 5 mm diameter maintained as a base temperature at 100 degree Celsius and the ambient temperature is at 25 degree Celsius and the convective heat transfer coefficient 100 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now, the question is what should be the material chosen? Okay. Okay. So, here the question asked is okay, go ahead and figure out the temperature distributions for pure copper, aluminum alloy and stainless steel. Okay. So, that is one question and of course, the another one is estimate how long the rods must be for the assumption of infinite length yield and accurate estimate of heat loss. We will come to that little later. So, if I just go ahead and plug in uh, the insulated boundary condition on the other side, is that right? 
I put the insulated boundary condition. Yes, yes, this equation is valid for insulated boundary condition. Let me go back and check. Yeah, sorry, infinite. The temperature distribution is e to the power of minus m x theta b into square root of h p k a c. Okay. So, if I do that, what do I get this? This is the temperature distribution I get with the length. Okay. So, can you interpret this graph for me? Calculations and all we will be able to do, it is just plugging in. What am I trying to say is, can I interpret this figure? Blue color is 316 S S that is this fellow and red is aluminum, maybe this is indigo, indigo is copper. Which material you would use? Stainless steel, one answer is stainless steel, another answer? Copper. See gut feeling we always say even if I am not a heat transfer guy, I would go for copper because copper is a very good conductor for some reason gut feeling is copper is very good just to give you the feel thermal conductivity of copper is around 380 aluminum I guess it will be around where have I written 180 stainless steel is around 14 or 15. Okay. Ideal field should be whole field should be at base temperature. That is true, that is true I have not I have not yet come to that. Yeah, please go ahead, please go ahead I should not be standing. Why the deep temperature should be same as that of base temperature. And that is why copper thing is the best. Okay, that is one interpretation. That is one. Can anyone else interpret? Yeah, no problem. It is the constant temperature. Only the initial part is. Wherever temperature gradient is there, that is all the place where the heat transfer is taking place. Once the gradient is, see, when, when it is becoming constant, it is coming almost nearer to ambient. After that, it is of no use for me. Is that right? So, without calculating the heat transfer rate, just being the seeing the temperature distribution, we can guess that the heat transfer rate for copper will be more than that of aluminum, will be in turn more than that of SS. So, it is very natural that we go for copper. We go for copper. So, how much the heat transfer? I have just summarized that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that is the impression. In fact, no. So, in fact, why do you say it is more heat? So, what is heat transfer rate given by? Yeah, it's on. It should be green color. Why is heat transfer rate? Uh, how do you calculate heat transfer rate? Do not worry. Huh? See, I keep saying another thing I want to tell. I keep saying this and I have written this in bold on my board also and you can, my students can vouch for my words. Those who never make mistakes never make anything. This is what I believe in. Okay? If I do not commit mistake, I am not throwing myself into the middle of the sea. So, I need to commit mistakes. So, to Please do not feel this bad about getting it wrong. No, this okay. problem even we had a lot of discussion. Yeah, yeah. So, that is the reason he said, he told me, come on, better stop yourself and explain it. That is precisely why he told me. So, what, what is the heat transfer rate given by? H A delta T. Where is that H A delta T coming from? It is equal to what? That as my fin can give away. What is k d t by d x for each of these three cases? How? Why do you, why are you keeping that as a fixed quantity? You cannot fix it, no? You are, you are dealing with the assumption that that is fixed number. Ah. I am saying that is not a fixed quantity. That is what we are interested, no? We are computing how much is the heat transfer rate taking. This This gradient for stainless steel much steeper, gradient for copper much shallower. K times that, next page he has put, I think. He yeah, has I have put that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you go, go, ahead, go ahead. So now you see the numbers, you will get the feel now. You see, dt dx, yes, you are right. Copper is slower, 
in terms of not slower in terms of time, in terms of length, but degree Celsius per meter, this gradient is quite less. SS is very high, but you see the wattage, how much it is being convected out. See how much it is? It can only convect 1.6, but aluminum 5.6, 8.3. Why are we? Why are we putting a fin? I want to suck out more heat. So that is why. So point is, I need to go for that material which is having high thermal conductivity. That is what it means. Okay. So that is that's one important thing which we get. Another thing is proper length of the fin. It's there in that problem, but still proper how what should be the length infinite means see i keep saying this in the class always infinite is not infinite for engineers maybe infinite is infinite for mathematician infinite has to have some value for an engineer isn't it so how infinite is infinite for us how can i answer that see as i see the temperature the temperature gradient is going on decreasing as i go later portions but then here Am I going to gain much in this? If not, if it is not much, where should I stop? That is the question. So, if I take Q of a fin of a finite length and Q fin of infinite length, I get the ratio as tan hyperbolic m l. You see tan hyperbolic m l, here I think it is not, here you see, because here it is bolder. What do you see? See, what does this mean? Q fin of a finite length is equal to tan hyperbolic m l of Q fin of infinite length. Is that right? That is what you get. So, the ratio is this. So, this ratio you want it to be fin of a finite length should be reaching that of infinite length. Is that right? So, when we when is it reaching here in this table? M l equal to 5 precisely it is reaching, but I perhaps I do not care. Well, even if it is 0 0.987, 0 0.987 is 0 0.99, which is one. Which is one. For an for an engineer, it's perhaps okay because length increase from ML equal to 2.5 to 5 is that much costlier. But it's law of diminishing returns in economics we have studied. It's not going to commensurate for the input what I put in. It may the output may not be commensurate to the input what I put in. So, it may not be viable for me to go above 2.5. So, typically we stop for an ML of 2.5. That is for us infinite length, infinite length. So, infinite is not infinite for an engineer. I keep saying this in the class all the time. So, when do I decide, how do I decide? This is how I do. Is that okay? So, that is that I have answered infinite length. So, if you go back and put the values of L, you will see that L is 2, here I have taken 2.65. So, roughly around 2.5 you can stop. So, you can get 0.19 meters. Of course, this lengths will change for each one because k's are for each material they are different. Yeah, 0 0.33, 0 0.23 and 0 0.07. Okay. So, that is about proper length of the fin. So, then another important thing is I think we will take 5 more minutes and then we will move towards coffee. So, what is any question so far? I have intentionally gone very fast. You want to stop me and ask some questions for the portion covered so far? Do not mind even if you get questions in the middle of the night, write down and come tomorrow we can discuss, no issues. Okay. So, fin efficiency. So, how efficient is my, actually we introduce in fins two concepts, one is efficiency, another one is effectiveness and we know that these two can be interrelated through areas, just areas. So, if I know one, I should be getting the other if I know the areas. Okay. So, fin efficiency is, how do I define fin efficiency, that is <coughs> fin as one of you were telling, when will be the fin be very efficient? You were telling that when the fin is at the base temperature, I have a figure for that. Yeah, When fin is at completely at the base temperature, it is going to transfer maximum heat, but unfortunately real life is not going to be that way. 
as we saw irrespective of the boundary conditions on the left and the right that is the base and the fin tip, we are bound to get temperature gradients. So, with the temperature gradients heat transfer rates are going to be lesser than the case in which the complete fin is being maintained at the same temperature. So, I take ideals, the ideal situation is always we take and compare. I take this example in the class also, why do we study Carnot cycle, although we know that Carnot cycle efficiency we can never reach, why because they are ideal, only when I know what is ideal I can live my life correctly, why do we worry about ideals in life also. So, we should know what are the ideals, then only we can live our life towards that may not be ideally, but at least towards that. Okay. So, here also we are comparing the real life case with the ideal case. So, you get Q fin that is the actual heat, trace, heat transfer rate from the fin to the ideal, ideal heat transfer rate from the fin as if the entire fin was maintained at the base temperature. So, that is what is this. So, we know the Q fin, we have really figured out all the relations for Q fin, now it is straightforward. So, Q fin maximum is heat transfer coefficient into area of the fin into base temperature minus the input. So, that is how you one can figure out the efficiency and you can sh show that it is indeed efficiency equal to 1 by m L. So, for various cases we can show this is for insulated and this is for insulated tan hyperbolic m L by m L. So, the point here again same things I have put and these efficiencies have been figured out for various configurations, for various configurations because in handbooks you might have seen various configurations fin efficiencies uh, with various geometric parameters they are listed out. So, here for various fin configurations we have fin efficiencies. Okay. So, for various other configurations they are there. I think I will stop here.